Okay, here are some examples of just solving a literal equation or solving for a specified variable. Um, lots of these um, equations will look familiar if you're taking physics. Um, if f is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of c over d, solve for d. Um, if we have to solve for this variable down here, d, what we're going to do is um, isolate it, get it by itself. So first thing I'm going to do is kill the fraction. Multiply both sides of this guy by the denominator, 2 pi, 2 pi. And so what that happens there is these divide into each other, and that's just a 1. So what we get is 2 pi f is equal to um, 1 times the square root of c over d. That's what we get when we multiply both sides by 2 pi. Now what we want to get to is this d down here, and it's under the square root. So what we need to do is square both sides of this equation to undo that. When you square something, the, the power goes to each base. So this is going to become 2 squared, which is 4, times pi squared times f squared. The square root of something squared is just that something. It, gets rid it undoes the square root. And so now I'm going to kill my fraction. I like to multiply both sides by the denominator. So if I multiply this side by d and this side by d, what I get is 4 pi squared f squared d is equal to, these will cancel, c. Then if I want to solve for d to get it by itself, you just simply divide both sides by whatever's in your way. So what's in my way right here? is 4 pi squared f squared, 4 pi squared f squared. So these cancel, and so this is what d is equal to. All right, that's the first example. Let's look at the second one. Sometimes you have to solve an equation that involves an exponential. So what we're going to do is um, use an inverse property. That's what actually we're doing whenever we're solving, like when I um, needed d, it was, I mul was being multiplied by these terms and I needed to do the, get rid of these terms, I used the inverse property of division to get rid of it. So right here, when I get to this exponential, because I'm trying to get to this k, this is up here in an exponent, I'm going to have to use the inverse of an exponential, which is a log. So first I, I isolate the exponential expression, which means get it by itself. And so I have a times that. First I'm going to divide both sides by what's in its way, a. So then I get y over a is equal to e raised to the negative kx. So now to get to this k, I must apply an inverse of an exponential, which is log. The base here is e, so I'm going to apply the natural log, which means log base e. When I apply log base e of e to the something, these undo each other. They reverse each other. And so what you get here is just simply on the left-hand side, we get the natural log of y over a. And on the right-hand side, we get negative kx. And if we want to get kx by itself, we need to divide. It's being multiplied by a negative 1 and an x. We simply divide by a negative 1 and an x at this point, negative 1 and x. These cancel. So we get that k is equal to negative the natural log of y over a, all divided by x. All right, let's look at number 3. If we want to solve for b, it's right here. This is a pretty simple one. There's no exponentials going on or square roots going on. So let's simply subtract off this term, 2 thirds ax squared. So if I subtract both sides by that, I'm going to get y minus 2 thirds ax squared is equal to bx. If I'm solving for b, now that I've isolated the term that has b in it, I want to just divide off by what's in its way, x. So this is what b equals to, but I can even simplify this further. I could write this as b is equal to y over x minus 2 thirds a, 2 thirds a, and one of these x's will go into that. So whenever you're dividing by a monomial, 
you're allowed to sort of split the fraction, y over x minus 2 thirds ax squared over x. So this is what b is equal to. Okay, last example here. If we have to solve m2 over m1 is equal to a1 over a2, this is a equation you'll see when you have um, uh, equal forces. Um, what we can do whenever you have a fraction equals a fraction, you can cross multiply. So I can say this numerator times this denominator, m2a2 is equal to this numerator times this denominator, m1a1. And then if I want to solve for a2, I simply divide off by what it's being multiplied by or apply its inverse. So you get that a2 is equal to m1a1 divided by m2. All right, that's for little examples.